Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial on how to use SketchUp to lay out a meeting room or a banquet hall or any type of an event really. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through how to make something like what you see here. Um, this is something that I created in probably 10 minutes or less. Um, Google SketchUp is awesome. Um, you can do just about anything in here you want and you can see it from all different angles just like if you were actually in the room so it's a great planning tool I use it to organize my own thoughts as well as to present my plans to my boss or my clients whatever the case may be so um, this is a, a setup for uh, maybe a typical open space technology type of a, a conference. Um, so lots of circles, lots of whiteboards. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how I made this. So I'm going to zoom out and kind of push this to the side. So let's say you know your room is 60 feet by 40 feet. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this rectangle tool. We're going to go come down here and make a rectangle that's 60 feet by 40 feet. Um, so I want to drag it and then down here you see a dimensions box. In here I want to type 60 feet by 40 feet. Actually it looks like 40 inches. 60 feet by 40 feet. There we go. Alright so now that we have a floor we need walls so I'm gonna click a tool up here called push-pull um, this is a really actually powerful tool once you know how to use it basically lets you to pull or push any shape so we are gonna pull this upwards and let's say the ceiling is 20 feet so I'm gonna punch in 20 feet hit enter now we have 20 foot ceilings um, so here's our basic box room. I am going to actually get rid of the ceiling so we can see into it. I simply click on it, hit delete, or you can click on an edge and click delete. It does kind of the same thing. So here's our room. You can see they look pretty similar. So let me zoom in a little bit. Now let's say we want to add some carpet and put a little paint on the wall. To do that, we're going to use Paint and Bucket. So I click on Paint and Bucket. This gives you a lot of different options that you can fill things with. Um, colors, obviously. Uh, brick, wood, uh, vegetation if you're doing more of an outside scene. We're going to choose carpet. And we'll choose this pattern. And fill it in on the floor. And to color our walls, We'll go to colors and we'll just put like a yellow, yellowish tone. So I'll paint that wall, that wall, and that wall. So here's our basic room. So if we go back over here to our example, you see we got chairs and people and whiteboards. So did I draw them? No, I didn't. I, I could, but that would take a lot of time. So what we're actually going to do is place things into our picture that somebody else already created. So to do that, we'll click File, 3D Warehouse, and Get Models. So this is a database full of stuff that you can drop into your drawings. So we're going to just type in Banquet. So you'll see a lot of banquet tables, banquet chairs, layouts for entire banquet halls. Um, so for this we're going to click on banquet chair and download model and it'll ask you if you want to put it into yours you click yes and so now you can place it anywhere on your picture so we'll just stick it here now I don't want this big stack so what I would do is want to delete these so if I click it unfortunately it's selecting everything so I'm going to right click and explode. Now they're individual components. So I simply unselect that chair and hit delete. Now we have one chair. 
So how do we make a circle of chairs? Or let's say a row of chairs. Well, let me get turned around here. Um, this is done basically by copy and paste and everybody can do that. So let me show you how this works. You select the chair, edit, copy, edit, paste, and you can start lining these things up. So, put this one here. But let's say we want to make a circle, so I want to rotate it. Now this works um, like a fulcrum and an axis. So if I want to turn it but leave this part staying here. I'm going to click once here and then come over here in a straight line and click again. Now I can start turning it and it turns on the, the first point where I clicked. So I want to turn this 45 degrees and down in the lower left hand corner you can see the angle that it's been turned. So I'm going to aim for 45 degrees Of course, it's being difficult. Yeah, close enough. Normally, it, it jumps right to 45. Um, so, we are going to paste again, and this time we'll turn this one 90 degrees. So, same process. Click once, click twice turn it now it's 90 degrees now to move these there's this tool called move so we'll click this you grab any point on the object and then just drag it over if I want to move this other chair I do the same thing I I select it click move and just drag it forward a little bit so I could just simply repeat this process a bunch more times but what may be easier is to group these so if I select this chair and the other two I can click edit make group now they're all three connected so I can edit copy edit paste uh, but I still need to turn it in order to make a circle it's very easy to do just like the other times we'll turn this 90 degrees and drag it over here so now we've got our half circle I won't bother going the full way it's the same process um, to bring in the whiteboards it's you go back to your 3d warehouse and you get models and we'll type in mobile whiteboard there's one now if that wasn't in there you may have to create it yourself and if you do that I suggest saving it and then other people can use it and also you can use it in the future uh, but we got lucky and we're gonna be able to download this right into our picture so here we can uh, put it behind the chairs we could rotate it if we wanted to uh, we're just gonna leave it like this a lot of times I will put people into my drawings because it helps give an idea of the scale of the room and how full it may look once people are actually in it. So, people talking. There's all kinds of models. Um, some are more realistic than others. Um, for this one, we'll use a simple silhouette. So, we'll just put this right here. Now with these, these are what are called 2D images. And so any way you turn it, it still looks the same. Whereas everything else, you can see the back sides of it. Um, so that's how that works. All right, last but not least, let's put the flip chart pages on the back wall. Um, that's very simple. Simply grab this rectangle tool and drag until you have a rectangle. Uh, let's say we want to color this white since it will be sheets of paper. We'll click our paint bucket in the white and fill it in. Um, so we're going to put a grid on this. With these shapes, it, 
it's nice because it'll jump to midpoint. So what we're going to do is make a grid by going from midpoint to endpoint. Midpoint, endpoint. Midpoint to endpoint. And you can repeat this process as many times as you want. Go in either direction. So that's how the grid was made. And uh, if you remember above the grid, it said marketplace. So if you click 3D text, then you can enter text. So marketplace. You can change the height of the letters. We'll leave this at 8 inches. If you wanted it to be 3D and actually extrude from the wall, you could do that. We're just going to click place. Now this can be put on any anything in the picture. It can be put on the floor, the walls. It could have been on the whiteboard. Uh, we're just going to put it above here. And uh, we basically have recreated the same room as the one we built before. Um, if you have time, you can make this as complicated as you want. You can make it look very, very realistic. Um, I've spent many nights on here for hours because because it's fun. Um, it's fun and it's powerful, and you're only limited by your imagination. So um, I use this in a lot of different ways. Like I said, I I use it for my own self to just plan my thoughts to share it with clients. I also will use this with vendors to show them where their table will be in the exhibit hall. Um, I use it for the venue site so they know how to set up a room. So if I want five circles of chairs, I can show them exactly what I mean. Uh, I also will put this in programs for a layout of the event. Uh, it, it's just incredibly useful and if you're doing an event, you owe it your, to yourself to figure out how to use this program and then to actually use it. So. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial and check back. I hope to be doing even more of these.